guys, I'm Brian Latimer. Thanks for tuning in to my channel this week. You're going to be excited about all the videos I have planned for you guys in this series. Today is a very special show to me. We're going to do something that I'm super passionate about and that I've done since I was a teenager. Um, some of my first experiences uh, in a bass boat or in, or in learning the craft on my own um, outside of the rim of my dad was in a small aluminum boat on the river and today we're going to do some of that I'm going to give you a little bit of inside look of how I fish rivers and what I do to catch fish It's going to be a lot of work first we've got to get there it takes a lot of research for, uh, for fishing rivers and I'm going to show you some of the details how I find those little secret sweet spots and how I get to it You know, some of my first bass fishing experiences on my own, actually learning how to catch fish on my own, figuring out the pattern, figuring out the locations, figuring out the whole totality of what's going on today we're on, was in a small aluminum boat here at the Saluda River. It wasn't this, this particular section of the Saluda River, um, but it was in on the Saluda River. So that's why it's so close to me. That's why I, almost every year I try to make sure I, I take time out and go spend a little time on the river just to kind of get back to that to my roots of, of no electronics not really caring what's going on and what time I got to be back um, and all the specifics of, of the totality of tournament fishing that's that's why it's really important to me that's why I like to go there a lot it's a really serene place it doesn't get a lot of pressure there's not a lot there's no tournaments there at all very little fishing pressure uh, the fishing's okay. It's not really as good as you would think, it's being that there's not a lot of pressure there. But it's a place that's really special to my heart, and that's why I go fishing there a lot during the off season. So half of the fight on this particular trip is just getting to the bass. It's not really that easy in this situation. You don't just put your boat in, crank it up, pull up to your favorite place, and start fishing. You've got to find how to get there by road first. You gotta make sure you have access to put your boat in. Oh, and now we've gotta figure out, can we actually run our boat in this particular river? We get into the river, do all of that, push across flats, do whatever we gotta do. We've got the motor overheating, we're kicking up mud. I'm getting out pushing the boat, doing all this, doing all this work. I'm all by myself on this, and nobody wants to take part in this. Uh, this is a little bit more like work. Then you get up there, then you're actually able to fish. So it's a lot of work that's involved in doing this type of fishing, especially during these conditions when the water's low and it's hot and we haven't had a lot of rain. Like I said, river fishing has been something that's always been kind of special to me. Um, I grew up duck hunting. I think some of that love and that passion for it comes from duck hunting. Duck hunting takes a lot of work. You got to do a little research of how do you get to your places and things like that. And river fishing is much the same way. You know, I've got to do a lot of homework uh, a lot of researching Google Earth and looking at maps and studying road maps to learn how I can get to a lot of these places. So um, it takes a lot of extra work before you get to the water, before you can actually get out there and make a cast. And this trip is really a good testament of, of that statement. It took me about three trips. There's this one small section of the Saluda River that I've been studying for years and I always wanted to go see it. Um, well, it takes a lot of time. It took me about three trips to make this, bring this to fruition. It took one day of just searching on Google, uh, Google Earth, looking at road maps, seeing where I could actually get there by road. Once I get by there, find the access to the river by road, I've got to have a place good enough to put my boat in. Um, sometimes that's uh, knocking on the door, asking private owners, can they use their property? Um, sometimes that's just making yourself a boat ramp by taking a hatchet whatever you got to use and cutting out a path in the woods and dumping your boat in there. Um, so 
After I did that, took a day of searching, took a day of actually going and seeing if I could actually get access. And then I took another day of actually getting on the water. Once you get on the water, a lot of times there's there's a very shallow water column in a lot of these rivers. So you can't always just dump your boat in and go. It may not even be a, a place where I can actually use my aluminum boat. Sometimes it's too big as well. So um, I actually get into the river with the boat is a whole nother day process, a uh, whole full day process of, of analyzing and doing a little work itself so this was this trip and putting this uh this little segment together was a lot of work but i think you're going to enjoy it it was a lot of fun but actually ended up being a good river uh, a lot of times when you go to these river stretches they don't always have fish there's not always life there and this was just happened to be one of those sections where i looked at it on the map it looked good all the ingredients was there there was food there the water was low the clarity was good and it just ended up being one of those places that was really fertile environment and we caught a lot of fish. So like I said, I've been studying this little stretch of river before. I've fished the Salud River before, but this one little section I've never been able to go to because there's no access, there's no public access. So I've been waiting and waiting and waiting on the time actually to do it because I knew it'd take a little bit of homework. And once I actually got down to the river, it'd take a little homework and a little studying to actually be able to get out there and fish. So I've been watching it. The weather has been perfect this year. There's been no rain. There's been low river conditions, which is the best. It pulls them out of all that structure and pulls them onto these little isolated clumps and laydowns and stumps, river turns. It pulls them out of everything right to where you can catch them really easily. So when you go in these rivers when the water's low, you know, you can, you can pinpoint them and just pretty much just take advantage of them. Where everything is just lining up perfect. So. I make my way, do my research, and we finally get down to the river. I actually get down there where I can see everything, put the boat in the water, and it's just perfect, perfect. I cannot wait to get out there and get my hook wet. So like I said, when you go to these rivers, a lot of times there's not always fish there. There's not always life. There's not always food. And if there's not, no food, typically the fish are going to find food, so they're going to move away from those areas that are devoid of food and forage. And the, the water conditions has to be correct. But we have primarily largemouth here in the upstate, so if it's a place that gets washed out a lot, a lot of heavy current, the, the bass just tend to not thrive well in those conditions. So it needs to be somewhat stable water conditions. And there's certain years where that's better than others. And this year has been really dry. We haven't had a lot of, uh, this is I guess the El Nino season. There hasn't been a lot of rain. It's been really hot. And those conditions are really good for, for river fishing so I'm really excited so as we're getting out there I, I pull up to my first spot and you know I see a lay down and this is before we even get to the flats that, which is going to be a whole another process of this whole journey we get to the flats and I see this one little lay down that's on this little side pocket over here so I pull up to it I flip a big worm up there and the first cast I mean I, I work it maybe two minutes you know first or second flip in there Got him, got him, my first one. That's a very good sign. When I get a bite, the first time I pull up to a lay down, the very first one going in, I know it's gonna be a good day. If there's fish in the beginning, there's always gonna be fish once I get in the river, before I even get across the flats, back into the actual river itself. So that first bite really has me pumped about how the rest of the day is gonna go. You know, the more I get into this river, I'm starting to notice that, you know, I only need one rod. I've, I've, I've caught a few fish on some spinning tackle on, on a wacky rig because I noticed they're feeding on brim really shallow. These are, I, I like to call them, these are some rough bass. These are rogue bass. They eat things like brim, other bass, 
catfish, lobsters, you know, they eat just about anything. Um, but they're really concentrating on baits that are bottom, bottom oriented. So I'm just going along, even when there's not a lay down or anything, I can go along just on those creek turns, those smooth banks where they're feeding on brim and, and small little crustaceans. And I can go in there and just flip the bare bank and just hop my bait down the ledges. And I've got a couple bites even doing that. So that's one thing to, to realize when you go in those rivers, not all the forage and all the bass live where they're structured. A lot of times I'm going to hit that because those are higher percentage places, but you can also catch them on just bare bank, just on the ledges, the creek turns with no structure on them. But the structure is the deep water itself. Those bass can kind of ambush and set in deeper water and they ambush brim and shad up on that shallow bass. shelf. And that's what they use Reason. for ambush points is just the ledge itself, the little bit of deeper water. They'll push that bait up against the bank. That's how they ambush their feed. So, you know, after I fish a little bit, you know, I'll go through there. The river's looking great. All the stumps are out of the water. You can see exactly where the river turns are and everything. You know, everything's perfect. There's a couple little overhanging trees as well. So, you know, there's a lot of structure for me to fish, even though it's low. Um, so, you know, everything's, I'm catching a few fish, catching a few small ones here and there. And I'm starting to realize the fish are not really wanting reaction baits. They're really wanting you to get down in the structure, flip a lay down. There's a lot of rocks and rock piles in the river too, so those fish are kind of hanging on those creek, the river turns where the water is just a little bit deeper. And there's also these little back oxbows where there's, there used to be water when the water was high, but now the water is low. And those fish, they, they know, it's almost like they have internal memory. They know that those backwater ponds are there, even though there's no water there anymore, and they just pour right to the outside of those places. So just on the outside of those oxbows, those dry oxbows, is where those fish are hanging. There, stumps, logs, any any kind of structure is pretty much fair game. So I'm just taking that Texas rig worm. All it is is a 3 16th ounce uh, sinker, a big 10 inch worm, a five alt offset hook, and I'm just going along and just picking them apart. You know, anything in the water is fair game. If there's a stump, a twig, if the bass has got his eye covered, he thinks he's hid. So that's why all those little pieces of cover, no matter how big or how small they are, or fair game to hold a bass. One of the things that makes river fishing so attractive to me is you don't need a lot of baits once you go up there. You just have to put the work in to get there. And there's only about four baits that I even had on deck that day and I really only used one in this pretty much this whole entire process of this this uh, this particular river expedition. Um, a big worm, a big Texas rig worm, like a 10 inch worm is what I like to throw it, or something that you flip, whatever, you, whatever you're favorite flipping bait for flipping laydowns, wood and stalks is. Uh, for as reaction baits, I like a square bill crank bait, a spinner bait, and a buzz bait. Once I get outside of those four baits right there, you're kind of getting in the weeds. I will throw like a drop shot or a wacky rig occasionally, and I actually did use it on this trip. But those four baits kind of get you everything that you need in a river situation. This year was my first year on the FLW Tour as a pro. And even though it was a lot of fun, it was a dream fulfilled. It was really fun to get back to some of my old stomping grounds and do some of the things I used to always do. Fishing is just like every other sport. You get out of it what you put in it. So I'd encourage you guys, if there's a lake, a river, a creek, a stream, anything close to you, go explore, explore those places and see what they have to offer. Some of those places are untouched and many anglers aren't willing to put in the work to find the fish in those places or to access those places. If you put in the work to get to them, a lot of times you reap the benefits of doing the extra work. I'm FLW Tour Pro Brian Latimer. Thanks for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I hope you guys learned something. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Remember to tune in next Thursday for a new video so we can talk fishing.